What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for Power Book 2, Ghost. I wasn't going to review this show at first, but then I realized that I was really into it, and I kind of wanted to talk about it, so I was like, look, I got a YouTube. Let's talk about it, right? So, um, sorry for the delay, but yes, it's here. Now, um, I am a big fan of Power. I have been watching it throughout all the seasons, all the six seasons and whatnot. So, you know, I'm familiar with what's going on. I love the fact that they kept the theme song. I was very excited to know that because I was a little hesitant when the show started. I was like, I better I better hear Joe. Not no damn Trey songs. But um, anyway, let's get into the review, shall we? So the episode opens with Tariq. He is getting ready for school because now we know that he has entered college, which is a Stansfield. Now, I remember uh, last year, Tasha did convince um, old white dude, I can't think of his name right now, um, because it is his alma mater, so she convinced him to get into the college because that's what he needed. So, um, we also see that Tasha is walking down the halls of prison, and she's with this guard who is giving her a hard time. The guard is like, yeah, yeah you went here for first degree murder, not buying it. You look too prim and proper to be killing somebody, and Tasha was like, well, it was in self-defense. Nah, you're not a better woman, honey. So then uh, we see that Tariq is meeting up with his grandma in front of the courthouse because Tasha has a hearing and she's begging Tariq to come home and he's like, no, nah, I got to go to school because I have to take care of y'all. And then we get this new person in which I did not recognize, but I knew who she was supposed to be. We have a new Yasmin. Now I've been saying that I feel like Lil Yaz should have been taken out instead of Raina. They could have had Ray Ray kill Lil Yaz and we would have been just fine because we don't see her ass any damn way. She don't never have no lines and we never see her. So they should have took her ass out. But I guess they want to take Raina out for Wild Factor. But R.I.P. girl. Anyway, um, the grandma, yes, yeah, she wants him to stay with him. But he was like, nah. And then Tamika comes up because she is Tasha's attorney. So she was like, yes, we can get her out. We got her a sweet little deal. All she has to do is confess and, you know, say that it was self-defense. So um, Tariq was like, wait, I need to talk to my mom. Are you sure she said that? And Tamika was like, yep, she got her mind made up. This is happening. Also, I'm going to be saying some crazy things about ghosts. So be prepared to hear that. But Tariq ain't faced by that because he's the one who killed him. So then we have the prosecutor or the DA, Sullivan, who is saying that Tasha set Quentin up to drive her up to the club unbeknownst to him to kill Ghost and that it wasn't in self-defense because the argument that Tasha and Ghost had was 24 hours prior so there was no way that she could you know say that it was self-defense. So Tamika was like no James A. Patrick is a monster and the Democratic Party did not do their research on him because he has been investigated for drugs and homicides. So the judge is like okay Tasha can't just walk out of here because she is looking at a first degree murder charge. So we are not going to post her bail. So, you know, she's upset about that. Tariq, Grandma, all of them is upset. But she ends up having a meeting with Tamika and Sullivan. Tamika wants probation for an E felony and Sullivan wants manslaughter in the second degree and she'll get five years for that. But Tamika started pulling out all these pictures of murders that James A. Patrick had connection to. And one of the pictures that she pulled out was of Keisha. And of course, Tasha is shook because we already know she the one who did it. So Tamika was like, I pull these out and show these to the judge. Baby, they're going to let her walk out the courtroom, okay? And then she asked Tasha, do you think that James has something to do with this? And she was like, well, you know, I was, I was sure that I was next. A terrible acting job. It was just like, girl, who were you convincing? I don't even know how they even bought that or whatever the hell. So anyway, we see Tariq over there running off to school. In this episode, Tariq damn near ran everywhere that he went. So he's running to meet up with the dean. Dean is black and she lets him know that, you know, as an African-American man, we do need to be on time. So... He is able to join Stansfield. However, there is a catch. In order for him to be there, he has to tutor this basketball player, Ezekiel Cross. Now, he is basically the star of the show. You know how they do with these colleges. They go up for the uh, people who bring in the most money. So they said, you have to tutor him for all classes. And if he doesn't pass, that's your ass and you got to go. So um, they was asking if he liked basketball. And Stern was like, of course he loves basketball. On some racist shit. Like, don't play with me. I was like, bitch. Don't get cussed out. But yes, he got to tutor him for autumn classes. So we know that uh, Tariq is going to have to put in work in order to attend this school. He got a lot of things to deal with. 
So we see him walking around school trying to find this building because he has to meet up with the minority counselor and he comes across this girl named Lauren. She sees that he's lost so she wants to help him. Now Lauren is the girl who played on Everybody Hates Chris. She was also on Tyler Perry's The Oval. I never watched it but I seen a commercial so I knew she was on there. Um, and she was asking him is he joining canonical studies because the teacher is the minority counselor. So he was like, okay, um, what's that about? She mentioned that they need more black people in the class because it's only but so many of them. She just thinks that he'll be a good fit. You can tell that there was some type of spark between them. Um, to be honest, I was a little annoyed um, because she is a light-skinned girl. And it was just like, mm, yeah, okay whatever but we see they they give him another option later on now we see him down at the counselor's office and Tariq is confused as to why he's there because he was like look um i've been going to white schools my whole life so this is not a culture shock nor an adjustment for me but the counselor her name is caradon i forgot her last name but she was saying i'm really here for support because you're going through a lot of things personally with your father's death and your mom being in jail but Tariq is not really phased about that he was like look my parents would want me to get my education i heard that you teach canonical studies and reading a pamphlet i see that students usually graduate early when taking that class and she was like yeah but this is a rigorous course like you just got here what's the rush baby he got to get home to take care of his family and if he graduate early then you know he can get his inheritance but of course he didn't tell her that but we know what's going on so um he has to take an oral exam uh, for a book called The Stranger. So he has to read that. And he was like, look, I know that it's double the workload, but I just want a fair chance. So they're going to give him that chance, or at least she's going to try to give him that chance. So then we see Tasha and uh, Tamika talking. Tamika did get her uh, negligence homicide charge, which equals no jail time. So she's good to go. But there is a catch. Tamika's like, look, you, based on Quentin's testimony, you rushed him out like you were on a time schedule so somebody had to give you the heads up as to when ghosts would be alone with no security detail so then um she started asking her like if you know who killed your husband like you have to tell me the truth like who did it who gave you the heads up what's going on here and then Tamika started putting pieces together and she was like wait did Tariq do this so she started pressuring Tasha like, I can't help you if you don't tell me the truth. And Tasha was like, you know what, fuck it, Tamika, you're fired. You're fired. I don't want to hear nothing. Like, you on to me a little too close, sis. You got to go. So Tamika was like, bruh, like, what are you? Bitch, you got to go, okay? You got to leave. So then we see that she's walking out and, or Tamika's walking out and she calls Tariq. Like, your mom just fired me. She is protecting somebody. I think you know who it is. You need to get her to tell the truth. And she was like, I can't do it, but you need somebody who doesn't need the truth to win. And Tariq is like, who is that? And then we see Mr. Method Man in the courtroom doing his thing as a lawyer, okay? And Tariq is watching him like, yeah, yeah, I need him. So after that, we see Tariq waiting to speak with Davis. That's his name. And he was like, look, I want to hire you. And Davis is like, look, no autographs. Look, I know about your story, Mr. Tariq. Um, stay in school. Do all that you can. So giving him real generic feedback. But he was like, no, bro. I'm telling you, I want to hire you. How much? So in order to hire Davis, he has to come up with 500K, which is a lot of money. And that's up front. So Tariq is looking through Tasha's daycare stuff at his grandma's house. He's trying to find some information on one of the clients, a.k.a um epiphany because she was moving weight for tasha so um the grandma is just like i need you to talk to me blah 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 but he was just like look i gotta focus on school grandma i ain't got time to talk to you but then grandma gets a phone call and when she went to go get that phone baby i said grandma where you was going in that outfit she was so cute i was like okay hi Ian. she was real cute but she gets a call from tasha and tasha wants to talk to Tariq since she knows that he's there and um she was just basically like, Tariq, I know because he asked her about the daycare stuff. She was like, don't try to open up the daycare. I need you to focus on school. Worry about you, okay? He said, okay, but we already know he lying. He trying to get that information on Epiphany, which he already found. So then we get a scene with Caradon talking to a teacher at the school named Jabari. And she's asking him 
to help her get Tariq into canonical studies. But Jabari is not here for it because he's like, look, um, Tariq is a privileged kid. What does he need this for? He just got out of school two weeks ago. Now he's here. Like, you know, he's already a week behind and this is a rigorous course. They keep saying that. So, um, Kara Dad is like, look, I need you to take us out of the equation. Of course, we already know that they messed around, obviously, because uh Jabari is in his feelings and he was like well according to you there was never any us so you know she was like I need you to at least consider it or just meet him which he agrees to we see Tariq standing outside of the strip club and he comes across Epiphany Epiphany is different if I'm not mistaken I think the girl who was playing Epiphany last year correct me if I'm wrong was a uh, old girl from uh the neighbor in Insecure she was also in a few other things like she was in Boomerang I think that was who it was but they switched up the girl so she was like where I know you from and he was like yeah I'm Tasha's son blah 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 um I need you to help me move some pills so you know she was against it at first but she was like you know what I owe your mom so I'm gonna do it for you but you got to get your own product so he was like, all right, bet. Goes over to his dorm room and sees his friend Brayden who went to choke with him. He's a legacy kid, so his parents helped build some buildings for Stansfield and all of that. So it was destined that he goes there. Very excited that Tariq is there with him. He feels like they could be the interracial dynamic duo. He could be the drunk male Gibson and Tariq could be uh, Danny Glover, the serious one. Now, um, he mentions Effie, you know, like, I'm glad we're here together. It's fucked up what happened with you and Effie. And he was like, okay, well, by the way, since you're speaking to Effie, you got her number. So Braden gives him her number. We see that Tariq goes and meets up with her to get some product. And he was like, you know, you basically fucked up my life. Why did you do that to me? Did you even really fuck with me? She said that he was selling drugs as a hobby. She had to get it how she lived, you know, because she could barely afford books. But she really did like him. And he was like, mm, okay, so he takes the product and leaves because she was really trying to see what was going on. She was feeling all up on him and shit, but he takes the product and leaves. She was like, you ain't gonna pay me for that? Nah, it's just business because that's what she said while she set him up. So, boom. I hope we don't see Effie again. I really don't like her character. It was something about her that I didn't like on last season anyway. So, it's the day of Tariq's oral exam and he done overslept reading the book. When he gets there, he's introduced to Jabari and he's also introduced to Mr. Mr. Simmons. So they ask him questions about the book. Jabari is like, did you enjoy the book? Tariq thinks that the book wasn't made for enjoyment. It was pretty boring. Mr. Simmons asks him, okay, well, what did you think about the end? And Tariq is like, okay, what about the end? And Kara Dad was like, when the uh, priest attacks him, and Mr. Simmons is like, uh-uh, no help. So Tariq was like, to be honest, I didn't finish the book. I couldn't find it relatable. Um, he killed somebody for no reason. And it was just like, okay, well, too bad that Tariq didn't read the book because now Mr. Simmons and Jabari are pretty upset about it. But he did get Jabari's attention because he is a new thinker. He's passionate. You know, it's something out of the ordinary, which they're not used to. So Simmons is like, look, you y'all wasted my time. But Carrie Dad was like, he's been through a lot. You know, in all fairness, he only had one day to read the book. I think that we should give him a fair shot. Now we see that Tasha is meeting with her public defender child who ain't organized for a damn thing, okay? She got folders everywhere. She talked about how she had a long day and it's just like, okay, well, my sister's sitting in jail. How you think her day been? But yeah, she was just basically saying that um, she feels like she should take the deal that's on the table. But then, um, oh girl, what's her name? Uh, Sylvan or whatever her name is. Wait, what's her name? Sullivan so so the public defender is saying that she really needs to take the deal and why did she fire Tamika like girl what's going on but Sullivan came in and broke that whole thing up it was like the deal is off the table because forensic files came in today and the person who shot James A. Patrick was at least 5'11 to 6 Two. Unless you were standing on the ladder, you did not kill Jane St. Patrick. So you need to come clean and you need to drop a name. And that's when Tasha was like, okay, well, it was Andre Coleman who killed James. We know that he didn't, but I mean, okay. So then we see John and uh, Steve O, who is a part of the Democratic Party, and they visit sex. Now, Steve wants certain things about James to be under the radar. He doesn't want 
things to get out because of the Democratic Party. So what they want to do is turn it around on Tasha and charge her with the queen pen stature. And Saks is like, no, she is not ahead of the organization. She was abused. I seen the bruises on her arms for myself. She's an accomplished yes, but she's not ahead of the organization, which is why it's now a local matter. Like it's no longer federal. So John is like, look, I need you to do this for me because I'm the one who got you this job. And don't forget that I could easily take it away from you. So, you know, Sax got his hands tied. He always in some shit, right? Now, speaking of Sax, we see that he's going to this family dinner. And his family is big. And they also make fun of him. They call him Nancy. Now, I was taken aback by this, y'all, because I thought that they were saying that Sax is trans. I thought, I'm like, wait, is he trans? Somebody help me figure this out. But whatever they call him nancy he did say it was a nickname so that's why i'm starting to think like okay maybe they was just making fun of him but you know they're very rude as hell to him but this is a celebratory dinner because he is now a u.s attorney so you know everybody is against him because he is a family fuck up but he felt like he got something to prove his brother was like look i know that you gonna fuck this up because you don't do well under pressure so it's just like damn i felt a little bad for sax but you know he's still the enemy if you ask me we see Tariq going off into his new dorm he did have to move in with ezekiel um you know because he's going to be working really close with him so he goes into the dorm and Ezekiel is getting down with some girl hearing her from the back. But, you know, Tariq end up leaving the room and then we see that later on him and Zeke go to a celebration party that is being thrown by his aunt. Now, Ezekiel is from the South, but he was raised or he came up to New York in high school and he was with his cousins who he considered family and all of that. So they go to um, this party and the party's lit, okay? I really love this scene. They was playing some Naughty by Nature. You know, it was a whole vibe, right? He got hella family and Tariq really can't relate to that because he don't really have none. But um, Tariq had to go to the bathroom and when he goes to the bathroom, we see somebody getting head in there and it was actually um, Woody McClain who is, uh, he, played, he played Bobby Brown and he was very famous or I got introduced to him from Instagram. So I'm glad to see that he's on here. He's really exercising his acting chops. Okay, I see you, Woody. So um, Tariq goes outside and he gets introduced to um, the first cousin. What's his name? Drew. And Drew, you can tell he is a hater because he was giving Tariq a mean side eye. And I'm like, excuse me, why are you doing all of this? That was not needed. And then he also got introduced to Diane, which is his sister. You know, Diane is giving him the eye. Diane is real cute. You know, she got her chinky eyes going on. So you can tell there is going to be a connection between them because she was doing a lot. But um, the party basically gets broken up because a guy named Rail is looking for his girl. His girl is who uh, Woody, Woody's character, Kane, was getting hit from in the bathroom. So they started fighting and it caused all this commotion. So they're like, oh, shit, party is over. So then we get introduced to Monet, which is the Mary J. Blige, okay? She looked hella good. But she comes in there and she was just like, uh-uh, break all this shit up. Rail, you need to go home. Rail was trying to leave with his girlfriend, but she was like, no, I'll stay here. And I was like, oh, you're such a bird. But I mean, okay, like that's, you being disloyal to your man, that's not cute, sis, but go off. You, you a groupie, obviously. So she stays and they was like, okay, we already know Rail gonna be back. So you know what you got to do. So, you know, Kane breaks it up and, you know, he gonna get that gun because true enough, Rail did bring his ass back. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, they go back to partying and Diane is showing Tariq around, showing all the family pictures. Um, she did show the family picture of their dad. Their dad is locked up. They are black and Puerto Rican. He's inside because of drugs. And then Tariq was like, yeah, my mom is inside too. So then that's when we see that, um, Rail comes back and he got a gun. Kane got his gun too. So, you know, they about to go at it. But the police come up to break it up and Monet is like, it's okay, you know, we got to cover everything is all right. You already know she is in with the uh, police. She's definitely paying him off because they was a little too calm for my preference. Now, in the middle of this, Tariq gets a text from Brayden, so he got to go down to the strip club. So he heads out. But um, when he got that text message, Diane was like, oh, who is that your girlfriend? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Mind your damn business. I didn't like that she asked him that. Like, you don't know him. But anyway, um, we see Sax going to Tamika's house talking about this case. So then he goes into a hypothetical situation. He was like, okay, so what if somebody was at the scene with a gun? And she was like, hold on, wait. Don't tell me that you was there 
at the motherfucking scene. Oh, hell no. Nah. I Listen, do you realize if I was subpoenaed, then I would have to confess to all of this. You know what, Sage? Get the hell out of my house. I don't know you. You was never here. And he was like, no, but I need your help. And she was like, I don't know you. Get the fuck out of my house. I thought that scene was so funny. <laughs> she was like, look, um, I don't know what the hell you're trying to get me into, but I need you to get the hell out of my house. So then we see that um, Tariq and Brayden go down to the strip club with Epiphany and uh, he gives her the pills and a burner phone. And Brayden was, you know, mesmerized by the strippers and he was like, do you take credit card? No, baby, they only take Bitcoin. Don't come in here with that rich boy shit trying to pay for a credit card. You could tell he ain't never been to no strip club, baby. But yes, the whole thing is figured out with Epiphany. So, you know, she about to make this money. So then we get this quick scene with Kane in the stairway waiting on rail when they finally see each other. Woody, why I call him Woody? Kane shoots him down and then shoots him in the head. I was like, oh baby, this is real gory. But he walks out of the building and gets into the car with Monet. So you already know they a tag team, they a duo, mother and son, drug dealer killer type of shit. So she wipes off the blood on his ear. I said, oh baby, okay, real mafia shit. Now, um, Tariq gets a text from Lauren the next day. He is at his dorm and, you know, Ezekiel is basically saying like, are you sure you're going to be able to do my workload? Because I got a Moby Dick project or paper that I need you to do. But Tariq is like, I got it covered. You know, uh, Zeke also said that Monet likes him and all of that. But he gets a text from Lauren saying that they need to meet. So he goes and meets up with her and he was like, damn, you know, I thought that the men was the one supposed to be doing the chasing. And she was like, nah, bro, I'm just here because Kara Dad asked me to. She said that she's going to give y'all a second chance. They also said that you didn't read the whole book. But Tariq is like, look, that book is boring as hell. You know, he killed somebody in cold blood and it's like, you missed it. She's like, I mean, that's the point. You know, Marisol doesn't even know what's really going on. But he was like, nah, bro. You, you kill somebody, that's a decision. Even when you carry a gun, all of that is a decision. Of course, he knows that feeling also well because he knows that he intentionally killed his dad. So he ain't trying to hear all of that shit. So Lauren is like, that's the point that you need to make to them. Like, I think you need to present this to them and go about it like that. So then she leaves because she had to go to the bathroom. And then he gets a knock on the window and it's sex. So he goes and meets Sax outside. And he was like, bro, what the fuck? Your mom is supposed to be out of jail because Sax did meet with Sullivan. And Sullivan told him that the deal was off the table. So he was like, what the fuck? Like, she's supposed to be out by now. I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I'm the one who got her connected with Samika. I signed a waiver to make this shit happen and the deal. So, um... He told her, like, yeah, your mom is protecting somebody. Do you know who it is? No, he don't. Um, and then he was like, well, your mom lied, so we can't get Tamika back. She lied twice. One, she didn't say that she had an accomplice. And the second time she lied is when she said that it was Andre Coleman. There was no GSR on his clothing. So we already know that he did not kill Ghost. And then Sassy was like, wait, you're the one who told me that... Um, Andre killed him too and you know Tariq is real quick with his life she was like yeah that's because my mom told me so she was like or so Sax was like I need you to tell me who it is your mom needs to tell the truth in order to get out so Tariq is like fuck man you know like he's really he got his, he got his hands tied he really don't know but he was like I need you to fix this Sax or else I'm gonna have to tell them that I seen you that night and uh, Sax was like look you ain't, you ain't gotta do that bruh we gonna get your mama out. She can still do a deal, but she has to say who killed him. So, you know, Tariq is like, damn, he got to figure out a way. So then he goes to his dorm room and was like, hey, Zeke, I need to use your phone. I need to get on IG Live because, you know, I don't have an Instagram. And Brayden was like, bruh, you know, I'm always ready to go. You can use my live. But no, he needs to use Zeke's phone because he has all of those followers. So then we see that Tariq goes outside. He gets on Zeke's live and he is basically announcing that Davis is taking on Tasha's case and he wants to congratulate him for helping out a black family. You know, it was real clever. I said, okay, Tariq, I see you. You know, you're using that brain of yours. So he's basically forcing his hand, right? He's making an announcement. So people are definitely going to be praising him now that it's out there in the atmosphere. So after that, he takes his oral exam and he says that Marisol's actions were his and he was in control of his own destiny. You know, he's going on and on about it and they are definitely impressed. You're is impressed mr sim is impressed caridot is impressed so we already know that he's getting accepted into the canonical studies 
So then he gets a call from Davis and he was like, look, we need to meet. So they met up and Davis was like, mm-hmm, yeah, you did force my hand and Tariq gave him some money. But he said, all of this is only going to last you a week and Tariq said that's all that he needs and he asked if he could trust him. So he did let him know that Tasha lied about having an accomplice. She wasn't the one who killed him. So Davis was like, it doesn't matter what the DA promised or what kind of deal it is, it's never gonna be in her favor. So she needs to come clean and admit who killed her. So then Tariq was thinking and he was like, you know what, tell my mom that I'm not scared anymore. She can come clean about who did it, she can say it. So then Davis goes and meets up with Tasha and he pretty much got her the same deal that Tamika got the three years probation. But the thing is she does need to tell the truth. And he was like, I haven't even told anybody this, not even my own brother. Because remember Tamika said, he's somebody who doesn't need the truth to win. But in this case, he was like, look sis, you gotta tell who did it. He did say that he met up with Tariq before meeting up with Tasha. And he said, it's time to confess tell the truth he's not afraid anymore and Tasha's like are you sure that's what he said yes sis that's what we said okay so then we move on to another hearing and Tasha did admit that she lied and then she said that Tommy was the one that killed Ghost and it's just like girl what I'm sitting here thinking that it was sex that she was gonna say she should have said that it was sex because she even looked at sex weird like what is he doing here when he showed up to her hearing so that fucked up everything. So the um the guy from the Democratic Party was just like, mm, see, we about to hit her with that Rico. That's what he was saying to sex. And the prosecutor was like, I find it real hard to believe that James St. Patrick's best friend will take him out. So she's not buying it. But um, sex tell the prosecutor to drop the charges. So she drops the charges and the judge agrees to it. And they're all looking like, wait, what the fuck is going on? So then sex was like, Tasha St. Patrick Green, You've been charged with the Kingpin statue, baby. What? It was just like, Tasha has a fucked up way of ruining, like, she always ruining some shit. She ruined the whole thing with, um, with Ghost, with uh, trying to frame Quentin. Like, all of that was taken care of, but you went the extra mile to go frame Quentin, and now you're sitting here throwing out names like Tommy for no reason. Like, you better... Hope that Tommy don't find out about that shit because he gonna come and kill your ass. But, um, yeah, so it's just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Davis is like, Tariq, what did you get me into? What do I not know about your mom? And Tariq is like, I just got you into the biggest case of your career. When you win, you can take out the U.S. attorney's office and you'll be known as the biggest defense attorney in New York. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it was just so juicy. I really love that part. It was just like, oh my gosh, like, yes, yes, I love this shit. So Method Man or Davis, I got to get used to saying his name. Davis was like, all right, well, look, you paid for the entree, but you owe me 450k because we about to get into the whole entree okay so shit about to get juicy now we see that Tariq is down at school and he is doing the Moby Dick paper for Ezekiel but I'm thinking like Ezekiel are you not going to at least try to do some of this work but I guess I guess he's just dumb as fuck but whatever he's doing his paperwork and then he also looks up um his uncle uh Mary J Blige's husband what's his name Lorenzo Tejada and we already know that he was a part of this whole drug dealing stuff. So he's going to hit up Monet to get the money to pay off Davis for the lawyer fee. So it was real good, y'all. I know I kind of rushed or I feel like I kind of rushed through this. Um, It'll be better next week. I do apologize or um tomorrow, basically. But anyway, yes, y'all, that was my thoughts on the... Uh, first episode of Power Book 2. I enjoyed it. I really do think that it's going to be good. I can see myself getting adjusted to these new characters. You know, I really like the storyline or where it's supposed to be going so far. But anyway, y'all, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Tell me what y'all thought about it, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.